What's up uh, here with Scotty Bob? Um, probably one of the top wingsuit piles in the world these days. Uh, I don't know who's checking, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's up there. He's at the top of his game, and uh, it's super cool of him to do an interview with us. And we're going to talk about fear, confidence, and what he went through to get himself to the top of the game. So where did this all start for you? Um, I, I guess the best. Best way to start it off would be uh, when I was 19. I uh, I was in the Marine Corps. I did a. Uh, I was actually offered a chance to go to draw or to jump school, which is uh, it's static line jump school. It's rounds. It's like stuff you see in Normandy and like sure. Anna Brothers type shit and round parachutes and all that. Cool, cool. So for me, I you know 19 year old young kid in the Marine Corps and you know totally juiced on adrenaline and ready and like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to be fun. And then uh, I remember getting down there and then going through the training and it's about three weeks of training and the first two weeks is just, you know, hazing the shit out of you and then sure. making you, making you hate your life and that's, it's really not that bad. But then you get to like the jump week and it's like, oh shit, look, we're actually going to do this. Like they really actually do want me to jump out of airplanes. So and then I was like, okay, I remember getting everything ready and then them doing the, the pre-jump checks and you know I had no I had no idea what I was getting myself into no expectations all I knew was it's a very military mindset very this is what you need to do this is what you're here to do you do this 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 and you'll live if you don't do this and you're gonna die and then very very <laughs> dictatorial and everything and it was it was very direct was there was there any fear in like you jumping out of the plane for the first time or oh I'm very, you know, scared shitless <laughs> I'm like, I was scared out of my goddamn mind yeah uh, like but, everybody uh, is yeah so we get to the door and we get everything in we get our gear on and you know your first jump your your jump was called Hollywood so it's just slick with your parachute on and you're, but you're in a C-130 and you uh, everybody gets the door door comes open and I've got you know. 40 other people on the plane and like probably 20 people in front of me and people just start getting out and I'm going through everything that I'm trained to do and it's just it's going on auto like everything else in the military you're just kind of auto 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 and I remember handing my static line off to the jump master letting go and getting out of the airplane and I remember just the the sound will never like escape my brain because it was just like from dead quiet to just chaos immediately and you're out of the plane like parachute opens above your head and I was like holy shit that was the most fun I've ever had my entire life and then uh, I, I was hooked from that, nice. from that second board so from like from that fear to fun I mean it happened in a couple seconds uh, it was instantaneous yeah was... and then what did you feel like a uh, like a release in your body like that you found like maybe like a new place of like being that you've never experienced in your life and that is something that you knew that you would pursue from that second on um for sure like it was um i mean like like i said before the the military is is very direct and dictatorial so the idea of fun doesn't like I, the best analogy i try to tell people is the military has a way of making anything fun not fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. so but at that time like if, if something in your brain tells you that that like something that you're doing in a military mindset that this is a sh whole lot of fun like you obviously you're going to enjoy doing it cool. and any as uh, you know any aspect of what it is so from the second i landed and i did five more jumps and came back to camp Lejeune, north carolina and was talking to some of my ncoic's and they really were I kept telling them, like, this is, that was more fun than I've ever had in my entire life. And they kept telling me, like, you should get into sports skydiving. And it's like, I didn't even know what that was. Like, I didn't, I knew I'd seen, you seen pictures of, like, people skydiving. So yeah. you're like, okay, whatever. But a couple of them were actually sports skydivers. They um, jumped in a local drop zone. And okay. they were like, you need to go um, get your A, your a license. So I was like, okay. And. I was about to leave for Iraq. I had like a deployment in like three months. So I went and did a tandem before I went to Iraq. And then okay. that tandem sealed the deal. I was like, you were hooked. That was it. From then on out, it was game on. <laughs> cool. Okay. So that was quite a first time experience. And then I'm sure just going to Iraq was a whole nother ball of wax for you. And that was my second deployment to that point. Oh, it was? <laughs> oh, okay. Really All right. right. That's cool. <laughs> what? So what about your first deployment? Like, you know what what kind of things came up for you 
Mm -hmm. The first time you went there, and like, what were you doing? And you know, were there their fears involved with all of that? And you know, how did you get over that stuff? Um, I mean, the military being the military, it's like um, they train you pretty well. They they teach you to. And I, I, I mean, today's modern military, I would be, uh, you would be silly to say, I mean, there's there's always outliers, but, like, I knew what I was getting myself into. Like, sure. Even at 18 years old when you enlist, like, you, you're in, when you're 18 and you still watch the news, like, we invaded Iraq when I was in high school, like, I'm 16 and we invaded Iraq, and I was like, well, that's interesting, but I'm 16 and I don't give a shit about anything at this point in time, and then when I comes a time and I'm getting out of high school and I'm like, oh, I don't know what I want to do. And I tried a little bit of college, didn't really want to do that. It was sure. really boring. And I was like, okay, I'll join the military. But I knew full and well what I was getting myself into. So Okay. That's, that's Flash forward into, you know, boots on the ground in Iraq for my first deployment. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. But, like, I was like, well, this is about what I was expecting. <laughs> this okay. is crazy, but it's about what I was expecting. So, so no real, like, shock and... You know, for you or no? Okay, that's cool. It's a lot. Believe it or not, it's a lot of boredom. Yeah, it's a lot of sitting around. It's. Uh, I mean, there's crazy moments here and there, but uh, for the majority of the time, I would say I won't speak for everybody, but I, for myself, there's a lot of sitting around, and then some crazy, really exciting moments there temporarily, and then um, a lot of sitting around, a lot of gotcha. stuff. Like, um, but I, I will say that even as I was there, like. You know the the same behavior that I, or the same mindset that I had that draw me to something like skydiving. I was, mm-hmm. you know, that's what I was constantly seeking out. So, so it was is a sense of adventure to explore to push your own boundaries. Yeah. Is that that kind of stuff is like what really drives you to do what you do today? Very much so. Um, there's people, people Sorry, outside. <laughs> there's a bike going on. <laughs> well, you know this interview is going in down in South Central. Like, That's right. You yeah. hear gunshots. Don't you, you know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so has that has that been something that's been a part of you your whole life, or is that something that you developed over time as you grew up in you know into your teenage years? I mean, I would say. I joined the Marine Corps knowing that, knowing what I wanted to do and what okay. I, uh, I was young, very, I didn't know exactly what was going on and we'll take politics out of the equation. Sure. <laughs> we'll leave that out. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole separate But knowing idea. what was going, what, you know, knowing what I was probably going to get myself into and then what happened was pretty on par. Um, okay. And, but I can say that, um, jumping early, early on, um, drew me more than anything that I was doing in the military. Okay. Just probably why when I got out or I came back from my second appointment, it became a very easy, easy, easy so, you know, decision for me to get out and pursue yeah. jumping more than anything else. To stay in the military and sure. continue like, down that avenue, that rabbit hole. Okay. Everything's a rabbit hole. Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, there is. And, uh, there's some good ones out there to get stuck in, but um, some bad ones too. Um, so even before you joined the military, you know, as a kid, you know, up say up to age sixteen when you were kind of like, oh, I think I'm gonna join the military. Um, as a kid, were you still, you know, this adventurous? Were you always like going out and doing stuff? And and how do you I feel? It's, it's probably a better question for my mom. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, mom, I don't know. I was usually like a, pretty good at answering that one. <laughs> I would say I was a pretty normal kid. Uh, I, mean, okay. I don't think. Uh, I played video games, like, uh, but I went outside a lot. I left tree forts, rode my bike around in the woods a lot. Okay. And, yes. And uh, I don't know. It was a pretty normal childhood. I, cool. I definitely didn't, you know, grow up in the inner city. I didn't grow up in the country. I was just a suburban kid. But right on. Bored, so, no. getting trouble here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Boredom is probably the real key there. Like, I guess if you wanted to get really Sigmund Freud here, like, I, <laughs> I would say that that getting normally bored, you know, getting bored as a kid. And uh, was very normal for for kids of my where I lived. Like, okay. we're just trying to get into trouble as much as we could. Yeah. Uh, I did about 120 skydives in two and a half months. Oh wow! Nice. And uh, at a Cessna drop zone. So that yeah, was, that's that's. I was on I was on every load. Yeah. Um, 
I was jumping probably eight to ten times a day, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day, nice. you know, for three months straight. Wow. And in those three months, I just picked up enough knowledge, enough experience that it, just every jump I did was just constantly getting hooked on what you know what's this thing oh my god i learned this new thing and i want to learn more about this thing and oh my god i learned this new thing and i want to learn so many more things about this and it was just constantly about body flight and um just learning body awareness and skydiving and just and being confident with myself in the air and uh, in an environment that you know to i guess every most everyday people is a very foreign yeah totally strange foreign place. and strange environment but you're just you're you're constantly learning your body a lot more than yeah. uh, a lot more than anything else. You're just learning where you are in in the spatial and then that, time and that <laughs> space time continuum. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that that's great that you said that because um, you know a lot of the work that we do and some of you guys already know this is is body awareness and in spatial awareness around you and what's going on and being very present and conscious of of things. So, you know, what Scotty just said, uh, skydiving forces you into your body and allows you to be aware of pretty much every square inch of it and what's going on and constantly feeling everything. And It's um, pretty fucking cool. Like, yeah. it, it's, <laughs> I mean, I, I've been doing this for years now, and it's just to the point where the more, like, the, the, uh, the marginal return, I guess, is what... Yeah, so you, the, best, the people watching this probably have a lot more education than I do. But, um, the marginal return, like the, the return that you get on the amount of effort that you put into something like this is just is pretty incredible. Because you, you learn, you know, if I work really hard at one thing, then, you know, I'm going to get something out of it. Hopefully mm -hmm. anything you do, if you put work into it, it's going to give you something back. And the more effort and time and money that I put into my jumping... I mean, the, the average everyday world would tell me I'm an idiot for how much money that I put into this sure. stuff, but uh, I've it's paid me back dividends that I can't even imagine. Like, uh, not just in uh, not just in relationships, like friendships and anything. Like it's just knowing that what I'm doing right now and the the constant present is much more important than what's behind me and what's in front of me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> than, so it's, it's like really deep forcing deep. you into living in the moment, in, in the now, so to speak. I guess that's a very stereotypical skydiver answer. Yeah. <laughs> it, <it's, laughs> I, try, I wanted to go into the too much of the stereotypical crap. Sure, right? sure. But it's still, it's like, that's another thing that we, we teach and, and work and, and work with uh, with our clients is that, you know, it's it's about being present now and not and not worrying so much about the future or the past. It's And that's where everything is happening in the greater awareness and at that point in time. You know, you reap greater benefits in the end by being more present that way, and catching all the details and everything. So. Were you really aware of your body as much as you are now, um, prior to skydiving? Um, I mean, I played ice. I would say yes, for the sense that I played ice hockey for six, seven years. I played. Um, I was just in pretty active in a travel league hockey team for. Cool. For about six seven years in high school and but even then I, I, I quit doing that and I was um, I was a rower in high okay. school too so cool. uh, it's just I think I would say my my physical like I, I graduated high school I was 120 pounds so like I was definitely the runt of my sure. class <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't uh, I didn't weigh anything I was, uh, I was got very, lots of love in the military for uh, that too yeah, for sure <laughs> Um, but being that, like, I would say, like, being, you know, the, the average person out there would see, like, athletic ability as, as being, you know, a physical sense of, like, we, we all look at the football or basketball and sure. being bigger, and when you come into air sports, air sports is a little bit different, like, air sports, you actually, like, just your physical awareness of what's going on and your, your where your body is and what you were talking about just like your, your perception of of everything going on around you at one moment of time and you can break down one second into like a billion you can talk to any base jumper who's got out or out there they'll be able to tell you that i have so many moments in my life where i can break down one second into like a lifetime sure and you're you're being able to analyze that one second and being able to realize what's going on then and there 
and, and it's that, really important. And that hyper presence, basically, you know, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, you know, some of you guys may not know it on the level that we're talking about. Or, you know, the best example that most people know is like, say, a car accident. You know, they have that, that time slows down so much and they remember every second. But, you know, and that's, a, that's a more of a, a terrifying kind of uh, place to be where we're talking about more of a joyous place and a place that um, you're actually learning from. And um, so, yeah, I totally understand what you're talking about. And it's a good thing to be able to have that hyper awareness to find these little details that you typically miss during your day to really see the big picture and, and move forward in life and, and grow yourself. It's, it's in these little tiny specks that, that we find like the greatest growth, I think. And you probably would agree. For sure. Yeah. yeah. You're just like, holy shit, like, how am I going to get out of this one? And then, you know, that thing, sl the time slows down. You almost already know what to do and, and you pull it off. I mean, we can, I can boil down at least a couple of those moments. I'm sure. But, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, reaction, we call it rack reaction timing. Um, it's, uh, it actually is a tangible skill. I, I mean, I can identify it and I've, I've taught people at a base jump. Um, and that I can, I can identify in somebody tangible reaction skill ability. Like, how are you going to react when when objectivity requires you to take emotion out of the equation and analyze what is going on, make a decision and make the right decision at the right time. Sometimes, you know, I try to tell people that um, making a decision and making the right decision and making it at the right time are two totally independent things. And sometimes there's three different decisions that you can make. And one, two, and three may be, you know, you know, one's the really bad one, two is the kind of good one, kind of bad one, number three is the really, really good one. But if you make number two at the right time, and you stick it and you pull it off, then then you're okay. Like, sure. no, nothing's wrong. Like, you're, a, like, you don't have to be spot on perfect at all times, but making the right decision at the right time, when you narrow the margins down to the level that, which we operate in, like, constantly on a daily basis which is base jumping or wingsuit flying or whatever it is like when you narrow those margins down to such a very minute time frame that that really comes into play like like if you make a good decision and or a half-assed decision then you might as well stick with it because you just made that decision and now you're faced with the results of that decision now you got to make the next decision that comes after that one constantly analyzing point after point after point after point and then you know, seconds become milliseconds, and mm -hmm. each millisecond's a new decision. So, all along the way, I mean, making that, making that, making the choice that you just made matter, like right then and there, is probably the most important thing that I've seen with like the guys that I know that have made it and are very successful jumpers, and the guys that I know that are that are uh, that have gotten injured or severely injured and or have died or of a result of probably very poor decision making at the wrong, making the wrong decision at the wrong time. Sure. And sure. it's, uh, it's kind of hard. And it's from, you know, from my perspective, it sees as, you know, it's my job to identify those things and at least advise people on those decisions. Sure. As, as a coach. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Absolutely. I hate to use the term, but it's, I call it the terminal decision. Um, because it's the decision that you make that makes or breaks you. Like, and if, if it comes down to that one decision, like, I can, I can hike to an exit point. I can bring enough water for that, egg, for, for that hike. I can uh, bring enough, like, a snack bar on that hike that's going to make me feel better. I can, uh, I can prepare. I can make, you know, look at the line. I can, uh, I can analyze the terrain, looking at maps before I get to that. I can do all of these things. I can prepare as much as I can to get to one moment. But the terminal decision that I make when I step off an exit point, that is the terminal decision. That if all that preparation that I made to get to that point, the second my feet leave the exit point, that's that's the terminal decision. And you need to, whatever decision that you're making, identifying that one final decision, like it's the here we go moment, like mm -hmm. this is the fuck it, we're good, yeah, yeah, yeah we're, we're going, going live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, we're doing it live, like we're going to do this and we're going to do it now and... 
that's the moment that you have to make sure that your your decision making is spot on. Like, I I mean, I've gone off on hikes with not enough water. And I've I've gone on hikes hungover as fuck, and like, <laughs> like just wandering around in the dead. Like, but if I get to the exit point and I'm like, I don't feel this. I'm not good. Yeah. And I decide to turn around, and, and which I've done a couple times, numerous times actually. Then then I feel that that's the right decision that I had to make at that moment in time to yeah. make sure that I survive. Even though it's not coming at you at 100 some miles an hour, right. it's like you know, it, standing still or cruising at 100 in your wingsuit or whatever. It, it's you're right. That is the terminal point. It's like this can go from bad to, to really, super really bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> real quick, real quick with and, just uh, one step. And yeah. um, but I like to try to tell people that, like, try to. Um, you know, you can prepare all you want, but knowing that you can commit to something and fully, fully commit to that moment, like, I'm, this is what I'm going to do, and you stand there, and you're looking down at what you're about to do, and you're like, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to pull it off, and then I'm going to land down there, and everything's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And as long as you can sit to yourself and comfortably say that, then you're fine. But the being able to identify where you're lying to yourself, that's probably the more important thing. I try to tell people especially when it comes to this kind of stuff with jumping is like objective experience is the only thing that's going to actually be able to tell you what what decision you're making is the right decision or not sure um, and you have to make some bad that's, decisions that's to, get there. to be realistic it's time yeah. like like being um, like I'm not saying that I've been doing this an exceeding long time. There's definitely people that have been doing this a lot more than I have. But um, and I, the ones that are still here, I definitely look up to. But, sure. But the reason that I that that when I analyze the people that have done this before me, and um, when I think of them and how I apply it to me, is that they are constantly analyzing the the, the things around them, their skills, their abilities, their previous decisions the reasons why they've survived in the past and how they're going to continue it on in the future. Um, it's just, a, it's objective analysis. It's, it's continuously looking at yourself in an objective way and saying, saying to yourself, you know, I'm not as good as I think I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm definitely not as good as the people around me think I am. <laughs> so uh, is, am I capable of pulling this off? Am I capable of doing each and every one of these things? And then when I go, you know, after the terminal decision point that I, that I step off the cliff, if I'm flying a line, if at any point in time that I find myself in a position where I, I, I don't like what's going on, I always have an escape route. Like, where do I need to go? Like, where, where am I going to go? What's, you know, but that comes down to experience. Like, sure. uh, the first time I do something, I'm going to fly it you know, 10, 15, 20 feet higher and looking at it, just getting a good eye on it. And I would say that I've gotten to a point now that I can look at a mountain and I can know exactly where my escape routes are. Where am I going to go? Where am I gonna... I'm looking down at terrain or the ground or a mountain and I'm like, which, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? If this goes wrong, I'm going to make this turn. If that's not a good turn, if something happens, I'm going this way. And if I don't make it to that landing area, I'm going to that landing area. That's going to be pretty, pretty nasty. So I better pull really high. Like, and it's just constantly analyzing what's mm -hmm. going on. And it sounds like a lot of work, but like, it's when you fully indulge yourself in something that, that you're passionate about. Like I, I truly am passionate about what I do. Like I, I indulge myself in what I do. Sure. And when I, uh, like right now I haven't jumped in three weeks and I consider that being extremely uncurrent. Like in my lifetime, I can't really count the time in the last five years I haven't jumped in three weeks. So um, that's pretty scary when you sit there and think about it. <laughs> I mean, especially at the level that you're playing this game, I mean, that those skills need to be razor sharp all the time. And um, So how, how is that messing with you right now, or is it at all? Or I mean, I know that when I get back into it, I'm going to have to pace myself. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to... Um, that decision making that I, that I talked to, like everything, all variables change. Like variables change all the time. You don't, you never know exactly what variable is going to be placed in front of you. And uh, your previous experiences help you. They're, that's experience. That is, that is definitely, but it's not objective. Like objective experience happens 
from the moment that you're analyzing your exact experience. So you have to look back at what you're what you have done compared to what's going on right now. Yep. And realize that's how you analyze what you know. Okay. This is what I'm going to have to do, and if all those things add up in the negative, then you just walk down and just decide, nope, this isn't for me, and I'm not going to do it. Yeah, absolutely. But either way, whether it's for you or not you, you, you arrive at that decision pretty quickly, and, and you, you execute it, whether it's stepping off and, and going for your jump or walking down, and you're 100% committed at that point all the way. And... Um, I guess time, time and decision, like decisions and time, uh, in comparison with one another, is is a pretty hard thing because it's always relative. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, uh, I mean, there's a lot of decisions that you can push off. Like, uh, I'm probably the king procrastinator in life, and that's probably why I was one, wasn't very good in school. Because <laughs> I'd be making a decision like, should I do my homework right now? Well, I don't really have to do it right now. Like. Yeah. And then I get to like one hour before it's due, and I'm like, oh shit, Look, I guess I actually really have to do this thing right now. I do a shitty job, but I get it done. You know, I get the grade for what I receive, and it's sure, like, sure, sure. Am I going to die because I got a C on this grade? No. Okay, QED. Then yeah. I'm in the clear. Then I had more fun going out the night before than I did. Yeah, yeah. So and did spending the time to get the A on the grade, but exactly. So it is. It's this, this probably bad to be saying to people, but no, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the fun, and everybody's done that. So you know, it's definitely something you can. Re- everyone can relate to. Um, as far as uh, you know, let's take like some of the analytics out of this, and, and the like the systems that are in place on a on an emotional level. Where does that play in what you do um like how many times you know i know analyzation comes into making a decision of uh jumping or not jumping and choosing to fly one line versus another line uh but on an emotional level does that come in and affect you as well Uh, are we talking about like decisions outside of jumping or Uh, not so much outside of jumping like uh, as far as uh the emotion goes um, in while you're jumping. You know, are are, are emotions like coming up uh, while you're making decisions, and are they are you, are you hate, listening I, to them more? Uh, I would say uh, no, no, no. Like, cause uh, I mean, being um, that objective decision making is is really kind of emotionless, and it's. It's kind of scary and it's kind of sad sometimes, and it, it kind of has some cruel results sometimes. But like it's when you're when you're doing something that's entirely physical, like mm-hmm. um, you are, it's it's a practice of of emotionless activity. Like I'm I'm having the utmost fun that I possibly can. But when I'm actually doing these things, that gives me the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not thinking about emotion at all. I'm literally just, it's brick wall. (laughs) I know it kind of sounds weird, but it's like, I'm not thinking at all. I'm thinking about, like, I've made my planning and I've planned and I know that this one thing is possible that I'm trying to do, which is fly the line that I want to fly. But when I'm actually executing it, it's, it's a brick wall of emotion. Yeah, just I know that doesn't really, uh, no, it can be sad sometimes, but like when things go wrong, you're, you can only have that, that, to me, that provides me with, like, an objective moment in my mind. Where I'm like, I, this, I made this decision, I made this decision, I made this decision. Something goes wrong, you know, at least I have a sound. When I think of emotion, I think of something that is very fickle, like something that is very... Uh, well, and it does, it's moving around all the time. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's indecisive and... I can't, you, when you're doing something at that speed, like at that pace, like it, like being indecisive is really bad. <laughs> yeah, oh, abs- <laughs> it's gonna... ab- yeah, absolutely. Um, so not so much, you don't feel, you don't rely on your emotions so much while you're in flight and, and flying your body in, in time and space. And, and I can agree with you, I don't either. I'm not like feeling emotion while I'm doing that. Um, before and after the actual flight, um, oh god, that, yeah. that's the best part. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. That's why you do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So mm-hmm. like you like I would break it down to like uh, like logos, pathos, and ethos. Mm-hmm. Like if you got like the entire flight is logos and, and I guess pathos because pathos is telling you what to do and why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And these are the laws of like these are the rules of what you're doing. And logos is like this is how you do it. And then when you land, you get the ethos. Like yeah. That's before you jump, you get the ethos, and when you land, you get the ethos. But like. During the job, it's all logos and pathos. Like mm-hmm. that's all that's all you're doing constantly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like really pushing the the boundaries of what the sport is and in, in yourself. That's a hard one to answer because like like our sport in general is like it's constantly changing. Like I don't even know what wingsuit base jumping is. Like I don't think anybody really knows what it is. It's just it's morphed so fast that it's like. Uh, like, I was alive when the first, I was in high school, really, when the first wingsuit probably got jumped off the cliff. Mm-hmm. When you're operating and, like, it's it's very uh, constant reminder of how silly it is what we're doing when we, when a lot of us sit back and go, like, how ridiculous this whole thing is, like... Like, and we all, we also start to think it's like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, we all don't try to take ourselves too seriously because it's like, but we realize how much fun we're having, we're getting out of it. And we're like, mm-hmm. okay, there's something there. I'm going to keep doing it. But, uh, I mean, we, God, I, the hardest thing to think about is what are we going to be doing when we're 50? like what am i going to be doing when i'm 50 years old because i've put so much goddamn energy into this thing and uh you know like i had you know i've had probably dreams and like everybody else has had dreams about what they want to do or what they uh like i wanted to be an astronaut when i was a kid Uh, i mean and recently i wanted to be an interpreter for an arabic interpreter i was studying arabic at asu okay and uh when I started jumping, and when I started flying wingsuits and started jumping in the mountains, and the big mountains especially, mm-hmm. like, that's when I realized that this is what I was here to do. And I, I was like, holy shit, this is, this is it. Like, mm-hmm. and either I go full on right now and really see where this, this pipe dream goes, or like, I, I, I pull back and, and kind of um, feel out the, the other sides of life, but like, uh, what's the point? Because when you feel something that good, I guess that's what the emotion yeah. side of what yeah. you were talking yeah, about. That's, that's great. That's a great. When you answer. feel when you feel something uh, when you feel something that much, you know you know that that's what you're here to do. Sure. And uh, it, and then you know, that's that was a great answer to that question. Um, that was really awesome because uh, that's you know a lot of people will take that and allow fear to override that. And not go out and, and live an incredible life and be on the forefront of something, um, you know. From where I sit and from where a lot of people sit, you know, you're one of the cutting edge guys out there that, that you know, that are. are oh, really there's fear. <laughs> 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 there's fear from. Uh, I guess. I guess the best explanation would be like, you know, you're. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a. I don't have a 401k. <laughs> um, I don't have. Uh, I don't have a retirement plan. So um, I guess this question probably got slightly off topic, but this is, I guess, the yeah. best way to say it is that my life. I'm I'm banking on my life experience and the stuff that I'm doing right now, and I guess it's stuff that I learn. And possibly in Iraq, I've said it's things I've thought about, like sure. the stuff that I've learned in Iraq that, that maybe what I'm doing right now, regardless of the uh, um, societal impact that it has on uh, curing cancer or doing whatever, like I know what I'm doing is really silly. Like, you know, people may find inspiration out of it, but you know, let's get to the bottom line is I'm having fun and I'm getting paid to do it. So it's yeah. like, it's not, there is nothing <laughs> really, really inspirational about this. Like, but what I do realize is that when I do what I do, like I know for a fact, this is what I was put here to do. Sure. Like QED, like my life is, <laughs> this is what I was here to do. And if I didn't keep on doing this, then I would feel incomplete as a human being. So. That's and why I keep doing it. All the things that, on a societal level, you're going against your lifestyle, what you're doing. Like you said, jumping wings is off cliffs is kind of silly. Um, 
it has no tangible benefit to society at all. We've, we've actually sat there and thought about this. We're like, what, how could we, could we like deliver aid or like bring food bundles to starving kids in Africa? Like, how can we do here? Like, and I, you know, I've, I've done a lot of stuff like this and I've, I've really tried to find an altruistic good to what we do. But I guess the, the point to be made would be is that the altruistic good is pursuing a, a dream and pursuing something that... Sure humans haven't done before i guess when you really think about it like what was the point of going to the moon it didn't really do anything but yeah but as, so not comparing a, myself to neil armstrong <laughs> not either. but Sorry. but as a nation and, and and the world you know i was inspiring to so many people you know what what yeah. mankind can do what they what he can, can accomplish and um in you know sure it may not have the impact that you know neil armstrong had however it does impact a lot of people's lives when they see, you know, you guys out there flying at the level that you fly, and um, it inspires people to to go, you know, said maybe do a tandem skydive or something, and which would, you know, eventually change their life potentially. Um, I guess I, get, I guess the thing to fill in would be, like, I get a kick out of people saying, and I get a kick out of it, and it, it makes me happy when I see people actually say like. You know, I watched you do that, and that, you know, dude, that's awesome. And, it, and like, you can see that in their emotion and their reaction and after them seeing, like, and they're totally outside of the community. Like, it's really easy to get wrapped up in a community, like, oh, yeah. like everything else, skiing or yeah. jumping or anything <laughs> else. Like, but put that aside, and it's just really cool to see people that actually, you know, get a kick out of it and like say like that. You know, that's that's awesome. That that you know, I wish I could do that one day. And then like, I'm hoping that they would go back and say like, well, shit, like I can't do that. Like, maybe not do that, but like do anything that you want to do in your life and, and accomplish whatever the fuck you want to accomplish. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, whatever. For the love of God, like yeah. do something better than what I'm doing because all I'm doing <laughs> is having fun. Like, <laughs> please. Cure cancer. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I'm probably going to get cancer one day. <laughs> Save my ass. <laughs> so, but you have you out having fun, you know, is in a sense living your dream, a dream of some kind. Yep. Um, which a lot of people don't allow themselves to do, you know, mm -hmm. because they're afraid of, oh, they don't have the 401k. And they don't have like the house, and you know, they aren't married or, or whatever it may be. Um, they let these societal pressures uh, push them into this box, and and you're not. The reward to us is like well, it's progression. This is us pushing the sport in some direction that hasn't been done before. Like, I mean, shit, we're fucking human birds jumping off of cliffs. That, yeah. you know, and like, like that's pretty fucking cool. And but. At the bottom line is it's not worth any of us dying. So we all know that. We've all gone through that in the past, and we all know that it's just not nothing. Nothing is worth doing in life. Like no, it never is. And so when you when you're at that level, or you're at whatever level that anybody thinks you're at, and you're you're uh, you're making a decision, and you're going, is this worth my life? And if your answer is at any point in time is yeah, it's worth my life, then you should probably see a psychiatrist. And probably, <laughs> probably analyze what the hell is going on yeah. with your life because yeah. you, it's, nothing is worth your life. Yeah. Like it's Because you go back to the bottom line is we're all doing this for fun and then uh, yeah. the fun stops when the when the clock ends. So yeah. yeah, so you gotta, you gotta keep the fun meter rolling and, <laughs> uh, and definitely not die. That's the most important part. Yep. Um, so as far as you know, advice from all the experience that you you've gained by doing what you do, um, pushing through your own personal fears and, and building your own confidence around what it is or what it takes to go in a direction that that no one else has done. What kind of advice could you give to people who are looking to you know it doesn't have to be anything big in life, but just you know live a little bit of the dream they've always wanted, you know. What would you suggest to them as far as, you know, pushing through that fear and, and doing it with confidence? I realized the moment, like, it was it was one jump in Italy, um, 
two years ago, maybe three years ago, actually, about three years ago. And I realized, like, when I landed and I actually had that, that ethos moment of, like, sitting there going, like, holy shit, that was awesome. It was like, <laughs> and I know this sounds kind of stupid, but it was, a, it's, it was a moment where I could go, like, I, like, I stepped off that, I did that flight, I landed right here, and I knew what the fuck I was doing, like, and I knew it, and I knew that I knew what I was doing, like, and it was, it's not just confidence, it's, it's not arrogance by any means, it's, it's just, it's knowing that you knew exactly what you were doing, and, and you're, like I said, with objective decision making, you're constantly saying, like, what I've done in the past may be different than what I'm doing in the future, but, like, confidence is not brewed from, um, from, like, arrogance. Like, it's not brewed yeah. from something that is, like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, and I, you know, I will always know what the fuck I'm doing. Like, confidence is brewed from, like, like, when I'm here, I, and I'm in this environment, and all these things add up, I'm like, fuck yeah, I know what I'm doing. Like, and I'm going to go do this. Like, and it's, it has nothing to do with, like, trying to show off or trying to prove yeah. to whoever that you're doing. It's, it's knowing that you are in your element. And you can do what you're going to do, and you're going to pull it off, and you're going to be fine. Yeah. So there's like a synchronicity that you're that you're describing, basically, with yep. yourself, with the environment that you're in and around, and therefore that creates the confidence. It's just being one with. I'm trying not to be cheap. <laughs> moment here, but well, there's some Zen moments yeah, in what uh, you guys do. Come I, on. <laughs> like, I try not to get too Zen out, but it's 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 more just. You know, know where you're at, know what you're doing, and know that you know. Like, like mm -hmm. I and like that's the biggest part to me is like, like this constant doubt in the state of your mind, and that, that part in the back of your head that's constantly going like, oh, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and maybe this is going on, maybe there's a wind going like this, and it's like have have the trump card in the back of your head. It's like, fuck that, I know what I'm doing, and yeah. it's not arrogance, it's confidence. Confidence, like, yeah. Don't paint, don't, don't always paint confidence as arrogance. Like, and it's, a lot, I think a lot of people do that. Yes, and, uh, that's, that's one of the biggest things that, that we run into is people think confidence is arrogance, which is well, not. my buddy Alex is, uh, as best as the, as, as nutty as he can be. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll say he has probably one of the better quotes out there is, never let your fear become somebody else's fear, which is pretty good, because, uh, I mean, it's very true. Like you, uh, uh, fear is very palpable. You can you can always tell when somebody else is scared, and uh, I will never tell anybody else to uh, not be afraid of any situation that they're in. But you can only be as confident as yourself in a situation. And um, if I find myself on any exit point and and I'm afraid of something, then uh, one, I'm gonna deal with it myself. And, and if, it, if the fear supersedes my ability to cope with it, then I'm going to say, sorry, guys, I'm out, and I'm going to back away from yeah. it. You know, that in and of itself may affect somebody else, but uh, that's, uh, that's my decision, and that's, mm -hmm. that's independently, like we were talking about terminal, terminal decisions. Like, yeah. like the second you decide to hop off a cliff, that's a pretty terminal decision right there. And you, uh, um, if you're... Um, if, if my confidence impacts somebody to make a terminal decision that impacts, you know, their health, then I would feel terrible. So sure. my, uh, I would say my, my ethos about it is, my pathos, I guess it's better for you saying it, but <laughs> my pathos about it is I will never, I will never tell anybody else to not be afraid about something. But that being said, if you're going to put yourself in a situation where you are confidently able to commit to that situation, then fucking own it. Like, yeah. like, like, and then you get there, analyze all the decisions that you made up until until then, and analyze the environment that you're in, and then make the right decision, carry through with it, and uh, land and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Like, yes, yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's that's good. Well said. We're gonna put some links to some of uh, Scotty Bob's awesome flying for you guys uh, down below. And uh, you, you'll be able to check out him flying his wingsuit uh, all over the world. Uh, there's some phenomenal videos, some, some of the, the better ones I've seen out there. Um, the talent that this guy has is incredible to me. And 
I know a lot of you guys have, have seen them fly too, so um, look forward to uh, getting those links down below. And um, so you got some sponsors and people that have helped you out to get you where you are. And so uh, say more importantly, I'd like to like to say thank you to uh, Mario Richard and John Leary. They're uh, big heroes of mine. Um, I love those guys. They're uh, two of my favorite people on the planet. And uh, also Chris Dugues McDougal. You're an idiot, but I love you. <laughs> um, and thank you to uh, to Squirrel and uh, to Kavu. So, thanks. Awesome. Well, cool, man. I really uh, appreciate you sitting down tonight and us going through this and shooting off the hip and talking about confidence, fear, and pushing the limits and going after your dreams and what it takes to do that. And For sure, man. It's been Anytime. awesome. Cool.